Hello, I'm Ted Nyquist with the Midwest Chapter of the American Rhododendron Society. In this lesson number seven, I'm going to discuss diseases and pests that could affect your rhododendrons. If you search the web, you'll find a multitude of threats or potential threats to your rhododendrons. It is enough to really scare you away from planting these. One site which does a particular rather inclusive job of listing potential threats is called rodeman.net and I suggest you take a look at it. But not to worry, only a few are likely to cause you any problems and they're preventable. But also there's one called the weatherman which poses a particular threat significantly in northern climates. We put a burlap wrap around all our beds, not each individual plant to protect them against the cold winter winds, and this seems to be a do, do a good job. I have encountered only a few problems which I'm going to discuss in detail today, and all, as I said before, are preventable with attention to some details. First, I should mention that a new gardener growing rhododendrons and azaleas, that you'll notice some of your evergreen rhododendrons, and particularly the large leaf elepidotes, will periodically show some of their leaves turning yellow and falling off. What you say, I thought elepidotes and evergreens were supposed to keep their leaves. Well, they are, just as evergreens and conifers do leave needles from time to time, so do the elepidotes and other evergreen rhododendron plants. Every two to three years, they w some of the leaves will fall off, not all of them. Don't panic as I initially did. This is just a natural occurrence, and your plants are likely to be doing just fine. One insect problem that I experience is that involving caterpillars showing up on my deciduous rhododendrons or azaleas in early spring around mid-May. This particularly affects the Northern Light series of deciduous azaleas I've found. If you don't catch them early, they will start eating the leaves uh, of your plants. The caterpillars are about one half to one inch long and greenish in color, at least the ones that have affected our plants are. I would check your deciduous azaleas each day starting in early May to check the problem because if you ignore it or catch it late, they will eat, will eat all your leaves. I haven't found them to actually kill the plant, but it will significantly affect their foliage. Once they appear, I spray with a bonide product that is sufficient to rid yourself of the problem and I only have to spray once and that seems to take care of it. Another problem I have noted is called azalea bark scale and they affect affects both the azaleas and the rhododendrons. This results in a small white patches or stems or sacs on the plants usually in the springtime along the stems. In mid-July a very small patch, 1 16th to 1 8th inch, appears. Inside are caterpillars. These can be controlled with a horticulture product such as a 2% spray of a horticulture oil. I use dram oil. Uh, and another spray about two weeks later. I do this when the caterpillars emerge in mid-July, at least in our climate. They can also be controlled with a drench with Safari or a Bayer product for the insects as they appear at the same time as well. Again, I would catch this and watch carefully in the springtime uh, to see if you do have a problem. The next disease I want to discuss is called Phytophthora, or root rot or water mold. It occurs most often if a rhododendron is planted in an area of poor drainage, and particularly if you have warm weather during the summer. Certain cultivars, such as Nova Zembla, appear to be more susceptible to this disease than others. Plants experiencing Phytophthora frequently show lower branches that wilt and die back 
and this quickly spreads to the upper branches and then soon the plants die. I've never experienced Phytophthora myself in all the years that I've been growing rhododendrons, but I have paid a particular attention to the beds and the way I plant them. And I encourage you to do the same also. You need excellent drainage. And if you provide this, then it's unlikely that you will experience the disease. The last disease that I'm going to discuss in this lesson is called chlorosis. If you see a plant with yellow leaves exposed and showing dark green veins, the rhododendron plant likely experiencing chlorosis, which is a result of an iron deficiency. There are several different causes for this, but a frequent cause is the alkalinity of the soil. If the pH is above 6.5, there may be enough iron present in the soil for the plant but the plant is not able to absorb it. You need to lower the pH of the plant to around 4.5 to 6 with amendments such as ferrous sulfate that can be dissolved in water and then sprayed on the foliage of the plant. This will reduce the pH and allow the iron to be uh, absorbed and slowly the yellow will turn back to green. A longer term solution is to add sulfur to the soil and the sulfur breaks down, which can take several months, the pH will gradually be lowered and the yellow leaves will turn back to green. In the following slides, my comments regarding insects and diseases affecting rhododendrons are summarized. For additional information, you can search the internet. And as I said before, a particularly detailed website is authored by a sea henning known as the rhodeman.net. Happy gardening to you. Although there are a multitude of problems that could affect your rhododendrons and azaleas, in addition to the winter winds and the cold temperatures, there are four that I want to mention in particular. One is caterpillars appearing on my <clears throat> deciduous azaleas in the early spring, about mid-May. It's important you take care of this early or uh, your leaves will be eaten off the plants. I have not seen the plants killed by this, but it does affect um, their growth and their appearance. I spray with a bonide product, although I'm sure that there are others that would do equally well. I only have to spray once to get rid of the problem. Another insect problem I have noted is called azalea bark scales. This results in small white patches or sacs on the stems of the uh, plant, usually in the spring. Uh, it also affects both rhododendrons as well as azaleas, although I only saw them um, on certain of my uh, rhododendrons. In mid-July, a very small caterpillars hatch, about a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch long. These can be controlled in uh, various ways, and I used a horticultural product, such as a 2% spray of dram oil uh, on them when they first hatch, and another spray about two weeks later. And this appeared to take care of the problem. Third threat that I want to uh, discuss for your plants is called Phytophthora, otherwise known as root rot or water mold. It occurs most often if a rhododendron is planted in an area of poor drainage, experiencing warm conditions. Certain cultivars, such as Nova Zembla, appear to be more susceptible to this disease than others. Plants experience Phytophthora frequently show lower branches that wilt and die back, and this complete, quickly spreads to the upper branches of the plant, and it will soon be killed. I have never experienced this disease, but I encourage you, when you plant your rhododendrons and azaleas, to take great care to plant them in an area with a raised bed or the proper soil so they will not ever stand 
in wet soil for any extended period of time. The last disease that I'm going to discuss today is called chlorosis. If your rhododendrons or azaleas show yellow leaves exposing dark green veins, the rhododendron plant likely is experiencing chlorosis, which is the result of an iron deficiency. There are several different causes for this, but the cause is usually a high alkalinity of the soil when the pH goes above 6.5. There may be enough iron in the soil, but the plant cannot absorb it. You need to lower the pH to around 4.5 to 6. This can be done by spraying the plant, plant's foliage with a solution of ferrous sulfate. You could also use an application of sulfur in the soil, but this type of a treatment does take longer to solve the problem. In the following slide you'll see several examples of the diseases that I've mentioned in this lesson, followed by several slides of our garden in the springtime showing beautiful azaleas and rhododendrons in bloom. Good luck to you.